Hi everyone, I'm Mick Sass, a senior inspector with the RV Industry Association. This training video will cover the basic requirements for installing a distribution panel board in an RV. Okay, distribution panel boards can be referred to as breaker boxes, DPs, or just plain panel boards. RVs are limited to an electrical service of 50 amps, according to the NEC. As seen in these photos, RVs are most commonly equipped with 30 or 50 amp distribution panel boards. Although RVs most commonly are equipped with the 30 and 50 amp distribution panel boards, some smaller RVs, such as the teardrop style trailers, occasionally employ a 15 or 20 amp panel board, as seen in the photo on the left. For this discussion, we will primarily be covering installation of 50 and 30 amp panel boards. These are the most commonly used in the industry. Just remember that the basic installation is the same for all distribution panel boards, including the 50 and the 20 amp DPs. First, all distribution panel boards used in an RV must be listed in closures. An enclosure means that it is enclosed on all six sides, as seen with these labels on both types of panel boards. The distribution panel board can be a combination load center, as seen on the left, housing both the 120 volt breakers and the low volt fuses. Or they can be dedicated specifically to the 120 volt system, similar to the breaker boxes installed in standard housing. In both cases, they must be listed in closures. Distribution panel boards, again, must be completely enclosed configurations. Marine style panel boards, as seen here, are not fully enclosed. Many of these are simply the front panel containing the breakers. The sides and backs are completely open to the rear of the cabinet in which they are installed. Therefore, marine panel boards are not acceptable even though the breakers installed inside them may be listed. As you can see with this combination load center, it is completely enclosed. All electrical components of the distribution panel board are housed within the six-sided enclosure. The next requirement, the main breaker must have a secondary hold down or securement. This means the main breaker must be secured with both the cover of the distribution panel and an independent secondary securement. In the photo on the left, we see a screw being utilized as the secondary hold down for the 50 amp breaker. The photo on the right shows a metal clip that again retains the main breaker independent of the cover on the panel board. There are other methods of providing this secondary hold down depending on the manufacturer of the distribution panel board. Always be sure to read the installation instructions to assure that the secondary hold down is installed according to its listed requirements. Next, let's discuss the location of those 120 volt distribution panel boards in the RV. Access is really the key to determining its location. The National Electric Code, the NEC, mandates a minimum space be provided in front and from side to side. The minimum space required in front of the panel is 22 inches. This 22 inches must include the entire width and height of the panel board. This allows the panel board to be pulled straight out from the cabinet or the wall for any needed repairs. It also assures that the door or the cover can be fully opened to operate the breakers or to replace the fuses. The required side to side dimension is 24 inches. So remember that the 22 by 24 inch area is the minimum in which the DP can be located, allowing for access to the breakers and fuses, as well as for the removal and repair. Obviously, this combination load center is blocked by a small carpeted step. This makes the installation unacceptable. If the distribution panel board were above the step, even by a fraction of an inch, the installation would be fine. Although the 24 inches side to side would not be centered, 
the 24 inches is still considered directly in front of the distribution panel board. Next, distribution panel boards cannot be located inside storage areas. This is prohibited because access to the breakers could be blocked by the contents in the storage area. This requirement also means that closets inside the RV are also prohibited locations for distribution panel boards. Additionally, any location where DPs are installed cannot have lockable doors. For example, as seen here, this would include storage compartments or in bathrooms with lockable doors. Now, storage compartments and cabinets with doors can house distribution panel boards if there is no space in front of the breakers that allows for storage. There are two ways to measure this. First, from the exterior face of the cabinet or the wall to the face of the distribution panel as seen in the photo on the left. If a distribution panel were to be placed here, it would need to be within two inches of the exterior wall's finished surface. With the thickness of the exterior wall measuring approximately one inch, there would only be one inch between the interior surface of the door to the face of the panel board. The second means of measuring would to take the dimension between the face of the distribution panel board to the back of the interior door surface. With this measurement, it can be no more than one inch as seen in the photo on the right. Now let's get a little bit more technical and with a requirement of the NEC, the National Electric Code. In all RVs, the ground bar must be isolated from the neutral bar. Unlike in some home construction, the neutral leg of the 120 volt electrical system in an RV is always isolated from the ground. The RV's ground leg then extends back through the power cord to the power post ground leg at the campground. So if the distribution panel board comes equipped with a strap or wire that ties the neutral bar to the ground bar, it must be removed from the panel board. As required by the specific listing installation requirements of each type of distribution panel board, assure that the 120 volt wiring is secured to the back of the DP in the appropriate manner. This may involve the use of cable clamps as seen here, or with built-in retainers made in the back of the plastic panel board enclosures. As with all 120 volt distribution panel boards, they must be grounded to chassis. This must be done with a minimum 8 gauge wire. Either solid or stranded wire is acceptable with one thing to remember. The ground wire must be continuous from the panel board to chassis with no breaks. As seen here, the ground is not continuous. When we take a close look at the circled area, we see that there is a break in the ground wire at the bus bar. At the bus bar, the solid copper number 8 wire is secured under a set screw and then continues with another solid number 8 copper wire through the hole in the floor to chassis. Again, the National Electric Code requires a continuous ground to chassis so the use of a ground bar to extend the ground wire to the chassis is not acceptable. The last aspect of installing the distribution panel board is how the wire is secured to the back of the cabinet itself. The white arrow points to the P-clamp securing the wires. When cable clamps are employed, as they are here on the back of the enclosure, those wires must be secured to the cabinet within 12 inches. For easy removal of the distribution panel from the cabinet, additional wires should be supplied. Thanks for watching this RV Industry Association's standard training video, Distribution Panel Board Basics. Please feel free to view all of our training videos available here on our RV Industry Association's Standards YouTube station.